Hi, my name is Will Hudson, founder of Hudson Shuffleboards. Now that you have your shuffleboard, you can follow us through this quick video that will help show how to properly install and maintain your shuffleboard. The first thing that we're going to do to assemble the shuffleboard is we're going to put the legs on the cradle. The 18, 20, and 22 foot tables that we make, they all have five legs, whereas the 16, 14, and 12 have three legs and the nine foot has two. Every table has two end legs and also one center leg. So to start, what you want to do is you want to flip the cradles upside down and you want to put the legs on. Now that you have one end leg on, you're going to put the intermediate leg on, which on an 18, 20, and 22 foot table, there's two of them. They are the legs that are between the center and end legs. This particular model is our dominator. It's got eight bolts per leg. The Grand, Grand Deluxe, and other models have four bolts per leg. Once you have the legs on and you're ready to flip the cradle over and attach them, make sure you have the cradle in the final position. It's going to be a lot of weight and where you put it now is where it should stay. When you're assembling your shuffleboard on a hardwood floor or concrete surface, it's a good idea to have a protective layer between that surface and your shuffleboard when you're assembling it. On this table, we already have one half of the cradle set up. The next step is to flip over the other half that we just put the legs on and join them together. Now we have the shuffleboard cradle set up. If you have any accessories such as lights or a scoreboard, now is the last chance to put those accessories on the table. Reason being, it's the last step that we have before we put the shuffleboard plank in. And given the weight of the plank, this table is not going to move once that plank is in there. What Glenn's putting on right here is called the seam plate. This locks the two cradles together. This particular table is our dominator line, which is our top of the line. It has a much wider seam plate, which is replicated after the old Rockola shuffleboards. Uh, our Grand, Grand Deluxe, uh, Intimidator lines, the seam plate is much smaller, much more narrow. If your shuffleboard comes with the scoreboard, now's the time to attach it. And here's how you do it. With every shuffleboard, other than our Grand line, you have a wood block here that will be your mount for the scoreboard. To assemble the scoreboard, put your wood block here, take the electronic cable, put it through the hole. Once you pass this cable through, you want to bring your post up to the table, and now you're going to mount it. Once you have the scoreboard mounted, you need to hook up the wires to the control panel. To do this, connect it to the V-wire that goes to both control panels. Now you're going to take one end of the wire and feed it through the cutouts at the bottom of the cradle. Once you fed the wire through the cutouts under the cradle and feed it through the exit hole at the bottom of the cradle, which is actually on the skirt. Once you have the wire through, on the grand line, you want to connect the wire to the control panel, place the two screws, and mount this directly to the side of the skirt of the shuffleboard. If your shuffleboard is a model that has a control panel mount like this, you want to pass the wire through before you connect it. Once you have the control panel attached to the bracket, you then want to attach it to the bottom of the horse collar. Now that you have the cradle assembled, we're going to do this first, first round of leveling. On the 18, 20, and 22 foot tables, we do all the leveling and adjusting with the center leg and the two end legs. The other two legs in the center, we call those the intermediate legs. All we use those for is support once the table is adjusted uh, and once the leveling is done. We bring those feet down, but to start, the feet on the intermediate legs come up and off the ground. So to start on your table, before the plank is in, put the level directly over the leg, level the leg, try to get the level as close to center as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect right now because we're gonna do another round of adjusting once the plank is in the board. We're gonna start on the end leg by getting this cradle as close to level as possible before we bring the plank in. We're gonna do this adjusting on the two end legs and the center leg. Again, the intermediate legs are only used for support. 
Those feet are actually up off the ground uh, until the cradle is level, the plank's in, and then once all that's done, we bring those feet down and use them as support. The next step is to get your plank ready to be put in the cradle. Make sure you have plenty of help because these planks are very heavy. Your plank, as you'll notice on this one right here, has climatic adjusters. The amount of climatic adjusters vary depending on the length of your table. It could be anywhere from three to eight. The next step is to attach your climatic adjusters. If your table does not come with them already attached, this can be done easily by simply putting the lag bolts into the pre-drilled holes and tightening them down. Do not worry about adjusting them right now. This is done after the plank is inserted into the cradle. We rested this board on the 2x4s. Now it's very easy to lower the plank into the cradle uh, with three guys. What we're going to do right now is raise the plank. Dave over here is going to pull the 2x4 out and we'll be good to go. Once we have one side of the plank lowered in, it's good to have two weights for the other side to prevent your fingers from getting broken. What you do is you take these weights, flip them upside down, put them right inside the cradle, and use them as a resting spot. Once you have the board down on the waist, the last thing you want to do is have a guy go underneath. He's going to push up on the board with his legs. The other guy here is going to take out the weights. When he says clear, the guy on the bottom knows it's, it's okay to lower the board. And Dave, go ahead and kick. Glenn here is going to take him out. Once you have the plank in, the next thing we're going to do is adjust the climatic adjusters. As I said, depending on the size of the board, there's going to be anywhere from three to eight climatic adjusters. To adjust the climatic adjuster, you want to put the level directly above the location of each climatic adjuster, starting at the very end. On this particular board, we're going to set this one to 20 thousandths of an inch concave. And I know that sounds like it's going to be pretty tough to get to, but believe it or not, there's an easy way to do it. All you need is a level, you have your level here, and three by five note cards. These are five thousandths of an inch thick each. For this one, we're going to take four three by five note cards, and what we're going to do is pass it under the center of the level below the bottom of the playing surface. If your board needs to be adjusted, you can do that by putting a wrench to the climatic adjuster and doing what we call inside tension. What we have right here is a climatic adjuster. Uh, it's not attached to the board, but to give you an idea of how to properly set up the climatic adjuster to give us that inside tension, which in turn makes the playing surface concave, uh, we took a climatic adjuster right here. To adjust the climatic adjuster and make it concave, start by tightening both the inside nut an outside nut on one metal bracket. This will prevent the all thread from spinning when you're putting the inside tension on the other side. Once you have both nuts on one metal bracket tight, loosen up the outside nut on the other metal bracket. That'll allow us room to put inside tension on this nut. When we put inside tension on this nut, it pushes outwards and creates space between the two metal brackets. When we do that, it makes the playing surface concave. Once you have your climatic adjusters set, the next thing you want to do is create what we call the dish in the shuffleboard. Most people think that a shuffleboard should be perfectly flat and level, and that's not the case. We want to create this dish, and by dish we mean the two ends of the shuffleboard are actually higher than the center of the board. When you shoot a weight, it should be traveling downhill, and once it gets to the center of the board, it's going to go back uphill on the other side. To create that dish, all you want to do is take the wrench to the bottom of the boards on the end legs and turn them incrementally. If you want to do two full turns on each leg, that'll work because we already know we have the board set level. Once we have the table set up, the climatics adjusted, we have the dish, the only way to truly find out if your table is shooting perfectly is to powder it up and shoot some weights and make sure that table is dialed in. Before we apply the wax to the board, we want to give it a good wipe down, a good polish, and make sure it is as clean as can be. The next step before you apply the wax is to apply a, a coat of silicone. Uh, the silicone, it acts like a hairspray. It keeps the wax from what we call tracking. So Dave here is going to apply a coat of silicone to the board, 
we're gonna get it ready to play. To properly put a coat of silicone down, you wanna make sure you hold it about a foot off the table and spray it outwards and let that silicone fall down to the table. A common mistake people make when applying silicone is to point the can directly at the table. This will definitely affect the play of the board in a negative way. Once you've applied the silicone, you wanna take your board wipe and do one pass down the board with the light wipe. The proper way to apply the wax is to do two passes. The wax comes in many different forms and speeds. Once the wax is applied, the final step to leveling and adjusting your table is to shoot it. Throughout the game, wax will move on you. To fill in those empty spaces, you can either simply grab wax from the gutter and sprinkle it in that area, or sprinkle it from the can. If the weights are falling off towards any side, more so than the other, then you know that leg needs to be raised up. Now is the time to do your final adjustment. Whatever side the weight is diving off towards is the side that you want to make the adjustment on. Simply put the wrench on there, turn it, work in increments. You can do a quarter turn, half turn, or a full turn, depending on what's needed. Once you have the table adjusted, now you want to set the intermediate legs on an 18, 20, or 22 foot table. Again, these intermediate legs are used only for support. The amount of maintenance is dictated by how often the board is being used. But for average play, once every two to three months, the board should be completely wiped down, polished, cleaned, and re -siliconed.